Hi there, everybody. Today I'm going to be pouring some new pieces from new molds that I recently got. Um, the one that I'm the most excited about is this is just a candy dish mold and this came from Devon Dotting or Devon Molds. Um, I actually ordered this a while ago and um, it was hung up with the Royal Mail Strike for quite a while but um, I got it a couple months ago, but I've been really busy and I haven't had a chance to use this one and see what the finished piece is gonna be like. So I'd like to pour that. I'm probably gonna pour a bunch of these today. Um, I got a new tea light holder mold from Devon Dotting as well, Devon Molds. Um, this one I believe has kind of a flat top. Um, can't exactly remember what I ordered with that. I'm going to be pouring a large round incense burner. This is one that I've done a number of times and you may have seen these in my shop. And then when I mix up my gypsum cement mixture, I always like to have some extra molds on the side just um, because it's really hard to mix up the exact amount that you're gonna need. Uh, and I don't like to waste anything. So off to this side, I have, um, this is also from Devon Dotting. This is a star shaped trinket dish mold. Um, it's a little dirty. I thought I had cleaned it off. And this is, this takes a lot less of the um, cement mixture. So this is one way I can use up some of the UltraCal 30, which is what I use when I pour these. And then um, I'm also going to try this mold uh, that I found at Michael's. These are probably for making, um, they were in the baking section, I think. They might have been in the resin section, but um, these are like little seashells and I don't know how they'll work for dotting, but I'm thinking maybe I can make like some little magnets with them. We live kind of near the coast and beachy themed things always sell really well. So I'll see if they turn out to be anything um, worth making. So I always pour... Um, my pieces in my kitchen. Um, we have a granite countertop. I don't have enough space in my art room. It's a really small art room. And um, what I do is I put down some plastic wrap. That makes cleanup really easy. Anything that spills, um, I can just gather up the plastic wrap when I'm done and throw it away. And I don't have to worry about damaging the granite as spilled ultra cow um cures because it it can generate some heat and you know i just don't want anything on the granite so um anyway i do use ultra cow which i know that there are cheaper uh, uh, products that you can use to pour um stones and you know anything like this i sell these so i really want to make sure that i'm using a product that's the best that I can find and UltraCal 30 is pretty much the best um, thing that you can pour with and create your pieces with here in the United States. Um, so what I'm going to do is let's see if that shows up, move some of these. What I'm going to do first is uh, we mix it with water. So we're going to do it by weight. That way it comes out just right. I'm going to mix up a batch multiplied by four is just my rough estimate. I know how much makes a single regular sized mandala stone. Um, so I kind of figure out just estimating how much I think I'm going to need without making too much and having too much waste. So the first thing I'm going to need is water and then the second thing is the ultra cow powder. So the first thing you want to do is before you turn on your scale 
is put your bowl that you're going to be measuring um, and mixing your ultra cal in on the scale and then when you turn it on you're not including the weight of the bowl in your your weight um, i'm going to add water based on the measurements that i am mixing today just about right actually that's really good and then what I'm going to do before I add the ultra cal powder mix is I zero out my scale again so now it's set back to zero and when I add in my ultra cal I'm only weighing that one thing that's really important is that you wear gloves when you do this especially if you're going to mix with your hand which is what I do because I like to feel all the little lumps and thicknesses um, and you don't want to get this on your hands. So now I'm going to add the powder. Um, I'm looking for just over two pounds of the powder mix. I kind of try to sprinkle it in and I don't want to do a big plop, it'll splash. I try not to make too much dust. Just because you don't want to breathe hordes of this dust. I don't think it'll kill you, but it's probably not the best idea. Okay, so I've got my Ultra Cal powder added. What I'm going to do <clears throat> is just let that settle into the water for a moment. Now what I'm going to do is just take my gloved hand and mix it thoroughly until all of the powder is incorporated very evenly in into the water. This process probably takes just about one or two minutes total. Um, you don't want to take too long because it will eventually start to set up. Not that it does it really fast, but um, you know, if you sat here and mixed it for 10 minutes, it might start to get a little weird. I don't really know, I've never done it that long, but I know that after I pour my molds, um, within a relatively short amount of time, the water separates out onto the top, which is part of the process before it gets absorbed back into the mold. I don't actually know if there's an, a mix time on the instructions. Maybe I knew when I started doing this. Okay, so this is ready to go. I've tried to mix it gently so that there aren't a ton of air bubbles. I'm gonna move that out of the way and get my molds onto my plastic wrap. And hopefully within view of the camera. Of course, the one problem with plastic wrap is that it does wanna lift up. All right, and I'm also gonna get my little star ready. And then, yeah, basically just pour it in. Here goes the bowl. I'm doing it slowly so that the chances of trapping air bubbles are is less. I'm just going to bring it to the top of that. Next is the tea light holder. And I can feel by the weight of what I have left, I might not even have enough for this. Maybe just enough. You have to make sure that you have enough Ultra Cal when you pour this um, incense burner because the little 
rubbery piece that creates the hole for the incense comes almost to the bottom of the of the dish so right in here is that little rubbery piece and you want to make sure that you cover that all the way all right so i have gone to the sink rinsed my hand off into the bowl i don't like to rinse cement mix down my drain and i will rinse that bowl out and dump it outside in a minute but the first thing i want to do is try to release any trapped bubbles in the mold just by gently tapping the mold sides. I have tried the paintbrush trick, um, which is where you take a damp paintbrush and you swirl it around inside all those little crevices to try to release bubbles. But for whatever reason, that doesn't work for me. I don't know if it's because I'm using UltraCal and not um, the products that I've seen it demonstrated with are a UK product. So I don't know if that plays into it. Maybe it's just the way I'm doing it. I do sometimes end up with bubbles, but I also use spackle, as some of you may have seen me do, um, to fill those little tiny holes that get trapped. All right, I'm really excited about this bowl. And the bubbles collect here. I used to get concerned about that, but now that I put um, velvet on the bottom of all of my pieces before they're shipped out, um, I don't even care. I just, you know, you base coat over that and then the velvet goes on and you don't see any of those bubbles. I used to try to scrape those off, but I just made a mess when I did that. And um, it seemed to be sort of a waste of time since I don't leave the bottom visible. All right, so we're gonna let these sit for a couple of hours. Um, I have demolded them, demolded them in as little as an hour, but these are a little bigger. I wanna give them a couple hours and then I can take them out and if I wanna mix up another bowl, I can. So we'll check back in a little while. Also, can you believe how perfectly I eyeballed that? I did one stone times about four. Um, and it took exactly, I probably could have used a tiny bit more in this mold just to round that up a little bit, but um, I think it's going to be just fine. And I had no idea, so I just kind of wing it. Okay, I'm all ready to take these out of the mold. This one I've done before. This is an incense burner. And that came out pretty good. Sometimes I get little air bubbles right around that little piece. That's not unusual and I can fix that with spackle. Same thing for right there, there's a little air bubble. Everything else looks pretty good. And this is the tea light holder. And as you can see right in here, there are some air bubbles. They just get trapped underneath the edge um, and again I will fix those with spackle they're pretty minor Let's see if I can get it out Ooh, that's right now I remember what I ordered all right so these small bubbles right here I will fill and then I will sand I like that one. Yeah, I forgot it. I couldn't remember what it was shaped like until I just did that. And then this one I'm very excited about. This one also has some air bubbles that are just around the base that I can fill. This is, I think it was called a candy dish on their website. It's like a little bowl. I love that. I love that. That is adorable. I do have one little bubble right there. I don't know if it's visible that I can fill in. Oh yeah, that's perfect. I think that'll be a very popular shaped item. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention about Devon Dotting's molds that I really like um, is that 
there's nothing on the finished product that says Devon dotting. Um, they do put it on their molds, Devon molds, but um, the finished piece, it's all set to be decorated and sold. Um, the thing about the Happy Dotting Company tea light holders is they now come with their initials um, are sort of embedded on the bottom of the candle cup, which makes it a little bit of a challenge because when people go to buy those from me, they don't really understand what that stands for. And it's just kind of weird because the letters don't have anything to do with my business. Um, I'm happy to acknowledge them by tagging them in photographs or tell people that I do use their molds, but I, I end up having to sand those out or fill them in with spackle, which works great, but it's just an extra step that I have to take that I don't have to take with these molds. Um, I really appreciate them allowing artists like me to have a fine finished product that doesn't have any sort of a logo on it um, and can just stand on its own as something that I sell. And I love saying that I buy molds from them. So thank you for watching. Hope that helps. You can comment with questions if you have any. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.